Welcome to the Bravo Papers, a safe space for all us Bravo fans who love to analyze, deconstruct, and talk about our favorite Bravo shows ad nauseum. So join me, Bravo and Botox, and we'll catch up on all the Bravo news and read way too much into our favorite shows and Bravo liberties. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Bravo Papers, Bravo Weekly News. I am your host, Emily, also known as Bravo and Botox, here to bring you all your reality TV gossip, news, tea, all that kind of stuff. Before we get into the news today, uh, I just wanted to let you all know that I was a guest on Kendrick's podcast, I Can Not, can spelled K-E-N. And we had a great time. The episode came out last week. Um, I think it came out on Monday. So if you want to check that out, go basically wherever you get your podcasts and just look up uh, I Cannot and you'll find it with me as a guest. And Kendrick and I talked about, so this is with Kendrick Tucker. We talked about RHOC. We talked about Roni. We talked about Salt Lake City, mostly about OC and Salt Lake City. Um, A lot about the lawsuit, you know, with Shannon and stuff like that. And yeah, we had a great time. It was a great episode. So much fun. And yeah, go listen. You'll love it. Um, just a little reminder at the top of the podcast for, you know, bonus episodes, you can go to patreon.com slash bravo and Botox and sign up to be a member. You can buy individual episodes if you'd like, or for a monthly fee of just $5 a month, you'll get four extra episodes a month. And when I get, you know, tea in my DMs that is sensitive or things that I can't share on the regular podcast, it's on there. You know, I do recaps of Ladies of London. I talk more in depth about the weekly episodes or upcoming seasons or whatever I'm you know, ranting about that day, some type of hot topic. So check it out if you like, patreon.com slash bravo and Botox. And let's get into the news. Because last week when I recorded, I recorded on Saturday. Okay, I thought I was like this big thing. I'm like, oh, I'm going to record on Saturday and get ahead of the game. And I'm sure nothing will happen in the next six hours or whatever, because usually I record on Sunday morning. So I was like, nothing's going to happen in the next few hours. You know, that's, I already know that, you know, um, Ryan is suing Tamra. And oh, that's what I meant when I said Kendrick and I talked about the lawsuits and OC, by the way. Sorry, I didn't mean the, not that we didn't talk about Alexis and Shannon, but we more talked about Ryan suing Tamra. Okay. All that had happened. I was like, okay, all this stuff has happened. It's been blowing up all day. It was like later in the day on Saturday. I was like, I can record it. No problem. Right. And I also knew I was recording with Kendrick on Sunday. So that's why I wanted to get it done. Um, But then later that day, what's his name? Joel Kim Booster, I think. Is that his name? Yes, that's his name. He has to make these stories about Shannon being terrible on, yeah, Joel Kim Booster on that, you know, ho- love hotel show. And so that didn't make it into my news episode. I'm sorry, everyone. Uh, Now, Kendrick and I definitely talked about it. Okay, we talked about it. That was the big, that was the one he was really excited to get into. And I'm still going to talk about it right now because there's been an update and Shannon has responded. And, you know, other things have come out since then. But see, this is what happens when I try to get ahead of myself. This weekend, I am not ahead of myself. It is Sunday. It is like 4.30 p.m. I'm just starting to record now. Usually I do it in the morning, but Love Love is Blind. I was going to say Love Island. Love is Blind season seven came out. I swore I wasn't going to watch it. I was like, I am not watching this shit. There are so many Love Love is Blind seasons and they just keep going and going. And every time I start watching it, I get addicted. I get hooked. The couples never work out. They're always all these garbage men, etc. There might be like one or two that work out, but I got sucked in. I got I just I, I needed something in the background. Next thing I knew, my whole day today has been revolving around it. And I've watched basically all the episodes. I have two left. Are you all watching this thing? Because it's actually good. Ugh. It's always good. Even though you know it's a mess, it's just like you can't look away. 
there's one couple that I think are kind of cute and I'm hopeful for. I don't even know their damn names because I've just been watching it today. But oh, man, I, I'm just always it. This is that show where it's like you get kind of excited for them a bit and then you get disappointed later. And in my head, I was like, we've got so much housewives. I mean, come on, New York, OC, Potomac, Salt Lake City. Like Jesus, it is a lot of housewives. I've, I don't know what Bravo's doing. They gave us nothing for like two months. And now they're like, OK, let me give you viewers, you know, in one way, serotonin, but in another way, you know, for people like me who are covering shows and doing the news and roundups, it's like, I'm going to have a nervous breakdown. And Beverly Hills is supposedly coming. If you didn't see, there was a promo out with them, you know, doing this like kind of dance thing and there's like silhouettes of them. And yeah, so I think Beverly Hills is coming too. So it's like, okay, just overload, honestly. Potomac starts tonight, everyone. So get ready for that. I will be watching. It's going to be very interesting to see the dynamics sans Robin Dixon. I've never watched The Real Housewives of Potomac without Robin Dixon. I never have. None of us have. It's going to be really interesting to not have her there. Like, I'm actually, I have a lot of curiosity. Am, am I going to notice that she's gone? Is it going to, is it going to, not be as good? Is it going to make a big impact? Is Giselle going to be different? Like I, yeah, I don't know. Apparently Wendy and Giselle are like buddies now. So I don't know. I'll take what that would you will. And some people are criticizing Wendy because they're like, how can you be so dumb to, I'm not saying Wendy's dumb, but people are saying this. They're like, how can you be dumb to trust her Giselle so quickly? Which like, I can understand that perspective in the sense of like, Giselle's definitely kind of two-faced and she can be, you know, she can be sneaky and all that kind of stuff. But then I also understand Wendy is on a show and, you know, if you're the type of housewife who will never move forward and make peace with people, it can be, you know, it can lead to you getting fired or it can just be bad for you. Like that's kind of part of the show. So I don't know. And then it's kind of like, are you going to be friends with her just because she lost her bestie and she has no one and now she's kissing your ass? Like, I, yeah, I get that. I get why people are annoyed about that. But anyways, I'm getting off topic. Okay, let's get into this Joel Kim Booster thing because this is crazy. I didn't really know who this guy was. I'm going to be honest. I, then when, when people were like Joel Kim Booster and I saw the the Instagram stories from him, I was like, oh, shit, like this guy's really calling Shannon out. But then I was like, I'm not I'm not great with names. I'm much better with faces. Like if you gave me the faces of everyone who's been on like seven seasons of Love is Blind, I'd remember could tell you their storylines and what happened with them, probably. But if you just gave me their names, I'd be like, who is that again? I need a face. So I saw it pictures of him. And I remembered, yes, I did see him on Watch What Happens Live. Andy was very entertained by him. Okay. He was talking about how he's been done a threesome and Andy was just like loving it. Now I know that he is known because I know he's had roles on shows like industry, etc. And other shows, I'm not sure which shows he just wasn't known like to me. Because obviously, and I'm not good with actors either. People will be like, oh, this person is like the hot actor right now. And I'm like, I don't know who that is. Um, it's probably because I'm so wrapped up in reality TV, to be honest. Um, but yeah, so I did see that episode. I just, I don't watch every episode of Watch What Happens Live, but I did see that. And I thought he was funny. And, you know, he gave some like, oh, it just started like downpouring here. Sorry. And he just started, he was giving like some snarky slash funny answers. So I was like, okay, like, you know, I didn't have any issue with him. Now, I didn't even know he was hosting this love hotel or hotel love or whatever the fuck it's called show with Shannon, Giselle, Luann and Ashley, which I need to take issue here. Is Ashley divorced? Because what are we doing? Ashley's divorced. I, I don't know. <laughs> like, just, it's just like what, so she's going to date and are the guys going to be down with it when they know she's not like, when we know like Michael Darby's still probably paying a lot of her bills and, you know, I don't know, is she still giving him foot rubs at night? Like, I don't know. So yeah. Okay. We'll see what happens. 
So he is hosting the show, and this is what Joel Kim Booster posted. I'm going to just read it all, and then I will react at the end. Just because you're a pathetic drunk on a reality television show best known for a string of failed relationships and a DUI does not make you a star and does not give you the... Okay, I sorry, I do have to stop. That is exactly what makes a reality star, Joel, okay? Having a DUI and having a bunch of failed relationships, including like Shannon's failed relationship with David Bedore is is one of the best known breakdowns of a marriage on reality TV. And it is, you know, it's not that a divorce can be iconic, but there are things that happened in that time that were iconic reality television. So he's right. It doesn't make you a star like a Nicole Kidman star or like, a, you know, a star in the celebrity, like an A-list star. Does it make you a reality star? Yeah, it kind of does. Sorry. Ariana Maddox's failed relationship with Tom Sandoval made her exactly that. A reality TV star. <laughs> Have the more drama and bullshit you have, the more status you have in the reality TV world. That's just how reality TV works because we're watching it to see because we want to see train wrecks in other people's lives rather than our own. We want to escape from our own, right? So, and no, I'm not saying like Shannon is like, you know, at the level that like Ariana is now because she's transcended reality TV. But like, you know, he's 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 oversimplifying. OK, this is an oversimplification. That's 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 what I think. OK, and does not give you license to treat the people you work with like they are subhuman, period. They will make me delete this, but DM me if you'd like to see some videos. OK, then he says in another one. Well, that was quick. Anyway, don't regret it. Hope you screenshot it. Hope she suffers. OK. Uh, and he's like, oh, they'll make me delete this. Please, you know, you're in the Hollywood reality, whatever world you watch Housewives. Anything that gets posted gets screenshot. He's like acting like he's giving somebody an instruction to screenshot. It. It's like we're all going to be screenshotting it. Um, well, let's just say I can't imagine what John Jansen went through. Poor guy. OK, now you've lost everyone. Listen, you may have had a chance with this. You may have. Not a great one because Shannon's had a rough time with John Jansen and with Alexis and just in general in life. So a lot of people are, you know, rooting for her to have a win. <laughs> so you didn't have a great chance already, but now you mentioned John Jansen and you showed sympathy for him. So you're fucked. Like you've lost people with that. And that was where he really... That's where he really, really lost me. Here's my thing. Is it possible that Shannon could have been, you know, an asshole to people on set, et cetera? Of course it's possible. I've heard, you know, I remember Andy kind of hinting at it in an interview. Like he didn't say it straight up, but he like made a face when Shannon was mentioned. You know, I've heard things that she can be a pain in the ass. Yes. Okay. Not like to the Ramona level, like... Not like in like even in like a malicious way, but just in a like she's a fucking mess kind of way. And here's this is what I can see. And Kendrick and I were talking about this. And this is what I really think would happen. Shannon would be having a bad day or something would happen. You know, some catastrophe because that's Shannon catastrophe it just follows her around. And she would have a freak out and a meltdown. She might say some shit she regrets once she's, you know, come out of a little tantrum the next day. You know, that's kind of what I get. That's the impression I've always gotten. So now here's the other thing. It's 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 confusing because Shannon's response is and other people and their opinions are making me even question that because, OK, so Shannon was asked about this in an interview that she was doing. Um, and it came up and she basically was saying that she doesn't know where this is coming from. And she started listing the things he had said, like, you know, he said he hopes I suffer, that like he's talking shit about my daughters, all this kind of stuff. And she said, you know, they had their rap party. They were like having a great time. 
she said that the whole season, like, you know, she thought everything was great. Like everybody was getting along and having a good time. And, you know, that she had thought some people said that they thought she was kind or something like that. So she says she feels like it's really out of nowhere and that she's really, you know, upset and disappointed that he would say this. Now, listen, I'm hearing all sorts of other stuff online, too. Like people are talking about how like uh, Joel has been like on like some type of like bender where he's been like high and like posting other crazy things. And people are like, have you been watching his stories the last two weeks? He's unhinged, all this stuff. Listen, I'm not here for like a smear campaign or anything. I've seen people tweeting about that. Again, I don't know really anything about this guy besides the one time I saw him on Watch What Happens Live. What I do know is that even if all this is true about Shannon, which I think the truth is probably somewhere in the middle. I think probably Shannon was obnoxious sometimes or needy or whatever. And I think people got annoyed with her sometimes. And that's it. Okay, that's probably it was probably something like that. Okay, maybe then Joel had a little maybe she said something or whatever that pissed him off. You know, he had a little temper tantrum about it. He also was like, maybe this will get me more attention press, it's, which it did. Um, I think a lot of people who didn't know who he was know who he is now. Um, maybe he thought it would be good for the show, which he's hosting. So that's more ratings, etc. Because now maybe more people are going to watch and be like, well, let me see how Shannon is on this show, right? Like, <laughs> I don't know. Like, I'm just going with, you know, the kind of classic PR stuff that often comes up in these situations. But at the end of the day, like, I'm not here to be like, oh, he's, you know, some druggy guy and that's why he's saying this and nothing he says we can trust, da, da, da. I don't know, okay? I, I, I'm not here, like I said, for a smear campaign. But what I will say is that I don't think it really matters at the end of the day. I don't think that people who really like Shannon are going to change their mind, nor do I think that this is going to impact her, like, significantly as a reality star, I do think it could impact him, though, in one sense, like maybe it's going to get a little bit higher ratings for that show or get him a little bit more attention. Yes, but this is not going to look good to the network. I don't know. Maybe he doesn't give a shit. Maybe he doesn't want to be hired again to host like one of these shows. Maybe he hated it and he's like, fuck this. I'm only going to do acting stuff and like not with this network. So who cares? I don't know. It just it seems like a very odd choice. It does. It just seems like a very, uh, like, if you did have this problem, it would be so, like, confront the person or production or I don't know, like, you kind of got to deal with it in a more professional way. Like, this seems very unprofessional. I hate to agree with Gretchen because she's in this interview with Shannon and she's like, this is so unprofessional. And yeah, she's kind of right. She is kind of right about that. All right, let's go to the next OC story. So in regards to this whole like Ryan suing Tamra for defamation or whatever, this this has triggered like this whole movement. I don't know, people, like I said this last week, I think, but people are like coming out of the woodwork to come after Tamra now. Like, you know, like I said, Gretchen has posted all this stuff. Now, Jim Bellino made an, uh, you know, an Instagram story about how he was, you know, he... He thought he had dealt with his bitterness and his feelings around the whole Tamra talking shit about him thing. And he realizes that he has unresolved feelings. And then Heather McDonald, like the podcast host, um, responded and says, said yes to Jim Bellino's video and said, yes, I too happen to have unresolved bitterness towards someone who did something to me six years ago that caused me a lot of anxiety and stress. So is she talking about Tamara? I'm assuming she is. And then Gretchen wrote this whole Instagram story, thoughts on Tamara's behavior. And then she responded, how much time do you have? It's sad that she's been getting away with harming so many people for years now. It seems like she can never be loyal to anyone, especially her so-called friends. I believe the only thing she has ever been loyal to is her paycheck. I mean, true. In my experience, she makes up horrible lies about people with no remorse of how it affects their actual lives. Okay, but Gretchen also lies. I just, I can't sit here and act like Jim Bellino and Gretchen are like these authorities on the truth. 
because they're just not. They may lie about different types of things, but they certainly lie. Um, and they are not, in my opinion, good, quote unquote, people. Um, it's like, you know, this is like the pot calling the kettle black. Um, okay, so she makes up horrible lies. She will destroy your character, your livelihood, your businesses. I mean, Gretchen, you did a lot of that to yourself too. Okay, under the guise of claiming she is just a truth teller, which finally it seems the audience realizes it's anything but the truth. It's gross and not okay. Um, I don't think the audience ever thought Tamara was a truth teller. I think they just always thought, she's messy and I mean she's always kind of been like a villain she had like moments like sympathetic moments on the show but she's always been a controversial polarizing kind of housewife so I I like like I'm I'm taking issue with how Gretchen is painting it like we've all been like rah rah Tamra the truth tell like no it's it's hasn't been like that let's let's get real and she has been fired once before so anyways because people hated her so much and they called for her firing so anyways um I have stayed silent for the last several years well that's because you're not on the show um and again I'm not defending Tamra I just this is one of those things where they're they both are terrible in different ways um, but these last remarks about Ryan really triggered me. She makes categorically false statements about him. And then when he finally stands up for himself, um, she calls him a little bitch. It's such a, a BS double standard. She can go after the men and not expect them to speak. See, now we get into now it's back to being all about her and Slade and poor innocent Slade. So anyways, then we have so we have her Jim Bellino, who like Jim Bellino also sucks, like I said, so whatever. But at the end of the day, you know, listen, the funny part is that Tamara has a very long list of enemies, clearly. Um, then we have Vicky. So Vicky's on the podcast that she have has with um, Christian Grey Snow. And they're talking about this. And Vicky's talking about how Jill Zarin and Teresa Judice are supporting her and Kelly Dodd in a possible lawsuit against Tamara. Like, what is this, a class action lawsuit against a reality star? I've never heard of anything like this. It's crazy. Here's my thing, though. This is stupid. Ryan has the right and he has a real thing going on. He has like a real legit thing, which is his, you know, he's going to court. He's under investigation you know, innocent till proven guilty. This is like a federal case. OK, that's like a real thing. So for her to say basically that he's guilty and he did steal money from this MLB player, that is, you know, a reason to sue Tamara. Yes. And again, you can sue anyone for anything. But I, like Teresa and Vicky and all these people who just want to sue her, just kind of like they don't like her or she said something about them that they don't like, like an opinion like Louis sucks. I don't like Louis or you know, fuck you, Vicky, or whatever else, like, that's going to be tough. Okay, especially when Vicky has lied about m very large things, like the whole cancer thing and others, right? Let me do a rewatch, I'll find you 10 more. But and then on top of that, you know, let's act like like Jill Zarin has doesn't exactly have a perfect record either. Like, I'm just kind of like, I get if Tamara maybe said something very, like a very specific lie about like one of their businesses or something that could really destroy you know something like like the lie that they told she said not the lie but what she said about ryan on watch what happens live then yes maybe but this is a little bit of a stretch i think because i can't think of something she specifically said about all those people that is so defaming that it has made me think differently about them and that I can even remember right now and the fact that I can't even remember any of them. Like, was it really that impactful? You're probably bringing more attention to it if you do a lawsuit. Like, I just think it's kind of dumb. Um, and don't even get me started on Kelly Dodd because she sucks. Okay. So again, listen, come after Tamara. Everyone come after Tamara. Tamara sucks. I'm good with that. But like, let's be realistic you're really you're not going to get anywhere i'm just saying probably okay all right so what else do we have from oc i think that's it for oc so let's talk about beverly hills because there's been a bit of an update with kyle and kim richards so you remember last week i talked about how 
Kyle basically had to have Kim removed from the home that Kim was living in, but Kyle owns due to what I'm assuming just based on the facts that I could get, you know, a relapse of her uh, addiction and a mental health type of breakdown. So now some pictures were released of Kyle visiting an L.A. courthouse amid reported battle for sister Kim's eviction due to alleged relapse. So I think as well, Kyle was saying she wanted her evicted because she no longer wants to enable her, enable, sorry, her behavior. So basically, Kyle called the police and tried to get Kim kicked out of the house. Um, but, you know, you have to have an eviction action with the court and it's a civil matter. And this is what TMZ has reported. So Kim apparently was allowed to stay in the home. OK, um, but apparently she has fallen back into substance abuse following years of sobriety, which, you know, that is common. That does happen. Um, and they made an official they ugh, they made the difficult decision to turn their backs on Kim in order to get her help. So. I guess they're talking about. Kyle and others. I would like to know who they are, though, and who else it was. But apparently Kim's behavior took a turn for the worse in September. And she was reportedly seen acting incoherent during a visit to the Hilton Hotel. So as a result, she was placed on a 5150 psychiatric hold, which is the legal involuntary psychiatric hospitalization of an adult experiencing a mental health crisis for 72 hours. Again, this is all according to TMZ. So insiders told people that Kim is in a really bad place and her reliance on alcohol has been, you know, a big problem with her and her family. Um, you know, this the source says that, you know, Kyle is doing her best to take care of her sister. I'm, I'm assuming the source is someone related to Kyle or someone in Kyle's camp. Um, but yeah, it's a tough balance between like, are you helping someone or are you enabling them? And, you know, you know how this family is. They're very private about all the details. So we'll probably get like some little snippets of information on the upcoming season. But I wouldn't like hold your breath because I know how Kyle and Kathy are. They're very like they keep everything very close to the chest. So I think if anything, we're going to get more answers from like TMZ and like news update on news updates on Kim's status or maybe even at the reunion if Andy asks for an update. again. Like, I kind of get it. Like, Kyle's hands will be a little tied in the sense of, like, Kim probably doesn't want her to say too much as well. Like, just say by then Kim's in a better place and is sobered up again, etc. Like, she may be like, I'm not on the show. This happened off the show. I don't want you to talk about it. And I think Kathy is a lot more protective of Kim even than Kyle is. I think Kyle is not as protective as Kathy is. And Kyle will... She will throw Kim under the bus a little bit if she needs to sometimes. If, if she thinks that she's going to be seen as the quote unquote bad guy by the audience, I think she will share more than maybe Kim or Kathy would want her to, to make sure that everyone knows that she's the good sister and that, you know, she's not some evil witch who threw Kim, you know, an addict and mentally ill person out of home. I could see that. I hope I don't, but I could see it. Okay. All right, let's talk about some Real Housewives of Salt Lake City news. So yeah, there's been this whole storyline with this girl, Brittany, on the show. She's like a friend of and she's new. I don't know. Do we care about this that much? Whatever. We're going to talk about it anyways, because this guy, Jared Osmond, who is her alleged, you know, boyfriend situationship, whatever you want to call it. You know, obviously he has seen Brittany on the show and she's talking about the relationship. And now this past week, it was like he's sliding into, you know, Angie's brow girls DMs and, you know, he's a cheater and he's leading her on whatever. So he took to Instagram and this is what he posted. He posted this really cringy, like, I don't know even what I would call it. It kind of looks like the type of picture that like actors do to like give out with their resume. It's kind of like that. Um, and he's like leaning back. And then it says there are always two sides to everything. The one we see and the one we don't see. Always. Ooh, wise words, Jared. Okay, thanks, Jared. I never knew that. So then this is what he's written. For the record, Brittany has a job on the show because I decided to go on. 
I give her relevance. I, I'm, see, I'm confused. He decided to go on. He's not on the show. Like, unless he's on it later. Like, what is he saying? Am I missing something? Okay. I give her a talking point. Okay, well, that's different. That's not the same as I decided to go on the show. Okay, Jared. Um, she promised me that we wouldn't take our love on camera. Camera with a capital C. I don't know why he thinks he needs that. Okay, that it would be our that it would be best that it would be best friends. He's not the greatest writer, guys. That was a full sentence. Hence the reason for all the best friend comments. I went against my better judgment and I filmed with her thinking that she would hold to that. So I guess there is going to be a scene coming up. Well, maybe she did intend to hold to that, but then she got this news from Angie about you DMing her brow girl. Ever think of that, Jared? Okay. Um... She did not, obviously. I've stepped up to give her all that she has needed to make herself relevant on the show. And what I got in return was a woman that dumped me and makes me look like a complete idiot by the time this is all done. Also evidenced by some of her TikToks. Not a happy camper. You know, and I realize I am oversharing a little bit. The fascinating part of Britney's story is that she adds so much drama for no reason. Truly in an attempt to be relevant. He's obsessed with that relevant word. Um, listen, do I believe that Britney is thirsty to be relevant? Yes, I do. Um, but at the same time, most people who want to get on Housewives or reality shows, like they know they need to sell themselves to production and have something interesting about themselves. And dating an Osmond, you know, is like a name people know. So she went with it. She used what she had at her disposal. That's what she had. Okay. Like, I don't think that doing that, like, is she thirsty as fuck? Yes. Is she a hot mess? Also, yes. Is she an oversharer? Oh my God. Yes. Does she try way too hard? Yes, 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 yes. But I don't think that her like mentioning the last name of who she's dead or whatever, like that's kind of what all housewives do. I'm married to the former the inventor of Palm Pilot. I'm married to the attorney who was involved in the Aaron Brockovich case, Erica J. Like I could, the list goes on. That is kind of part of what makes how that is the show. The show originally was being married to like wealthy men or being from like the kind of, you know, upper echelon of society. Be And usually it's be, you know, sometimes it was people worked. Okay. I'm not saying, you know, look at Vicky, she'll never stop working. But it was people who a lot of it was women who were married to wealthy guys, or like recently divorced or whatever the case is. So like, calm down, Jared. Okay. And and again, I'm not a Britney fan, by the way, I just I will always take not the guy's side. Okay, so <laughs> you know, I guess there's exceptions to that. There are. But in this case, no, because the fact that he wrote all this and put it out there just shows me kind of who he is. Um, I've never broken up with her. I've always been steady, spoiled her over the last year, paid for everything and have been a true gentleman. See, when you call yourself that, it's like, fuck off. OK, she's so damaged from her past relationship that she makes me out to be the bad guy. She's scared that I won't put a ring on her finger and I want to just play. Well, do you not? Because the DMs kind of looked like someone who wants to just play. So rather than steadily stay with me and work through all the dating issues that pop up, she runs like a scared child. I need to date a stable woman. Okay, so basically, instead of putting up with me cheating on her and not making a commitment, she leaves me when I act like a dick when I deserve to be left. Like, Jared, we are not falling for this. We know what you're doing. Okay, so this again, Brittany, I, like I'm undecided about Brittany, but this guy sucks. And Britney's thirsty, yes, but this is this is worse than someone who's thirsty, in my opinion. So the other thing that has come up is that <laughs> Lisa Barlow is throwing a little shade at Angie on social media. So she put up a tweet and she said, you guys, I just found out I'm Greek like 80 percent. And then she's like, just kidding, Mazel Tov. And then someone replied and said, really? That's surprising since Greek people tend to age well. <laughs> Ooh, harsh. And Lisa responded and said, no, I just don't have an overfilled face. Sorry, that's not your norm. Ooh, 
Lisa clapping back. So I, okay, but Angie caught a little stray there because the picture that's posted is like Lisa and Angie. I don't know. Okay. So I think she's saying that Angie has an overfilled face, which I mean, Lisa, like, let's wake up. Do you see where you are? Everybody does including Meredith and all your little besties too. So if you're going to insult Angie with that, you're insulting everybody. Um, now, another last story with Salt Lake City that is sad is sad, but maybe, well, maybe not sad, but um, Mary's son, Robert Jr., has checked into rehab. So that's the part that's maybe good, okay, like a silver lining. But it was it was hard for me to watch him on last week's episode. You could tell that he's struggling like I like you I could just tell if you've ever dealt with an addict or had a loved one who was an addict like you can just see it when those people are around like you just know and yeah I I just knew so it was it was tough to watch especially because it's her son it's so hard when it's your child um, but basically he tested positive for cocaine fentanyl and marijuana so he is back in or he is in rehab and just wish him all the best. And I'm not ready for like the emotional scene with Mary crying to him because I saw that in the preview and just the little preview broke my heart. So hard too, because like, you know, when you're a parent, like you just want to save your kids from everything. All right. So next we have some Real Housewives of Miami news. So this was also one that came up like shortly after I recorded last week. Um, so Gertie, they, they're filming for Real Housewives of Miami and Gertie posted this and unfollowed Julia as well. So I don't I don't know if it's about Julia, but I've heard it is. So basically, what if someone she, she there's a question and then an answer. It looks like it's from Google. What if someone throws a drink at you? The incident left many wondering is throwing a drink some a drink at someone assault the answer is yes throwing a drink at someone is assault in many circumstances hashtag the more you know so from what i've heard word on the street the street being the internet um i have heard that it was julia who threw a drink at gertie which obviously somebody threw a drink at gertie otherwise she wouldn't have posted that um, but I've heard it's Julia. Gertie unfollowed Julia. So, you know, puzzle pieces are falling into place, which it does surprise me because I wouldn't have pegged Julia as a drink thrower. But, you know, I guess a few years on Housewives can do that to you. It can turn somebody from a non-drink thrower into a drink thrower. Or maybe Julia has always been a drink thrower and she's just hidden it very well under a, you know, facade for all of us to see. I don't know. I ugh, I can't wait for Miami to come back. So I'll let you all know if I hear anything else about this alleged drink throwing incident. Meanwhile, we need to talk about the Valley because Jax is being Jax. So <laughs> this is like, this story is like, it shouldn't be funny, but it is because Jax is just so, I don't know, dumb, I guess. I don't know what else to call him, but Basically, Jax granted Brittany full legal and physical custody of their son, uh, Cruz, by accident. It's honestly, you can't make this shit up. But basically, there were um, divorce papers released and they were on Instagram. They were on Reddit. They were I saw them on Twitter, too. But basically, in these divorce papers, he is granting her full legal and physical custody. Now, an update on that. So this was this was all happening. And then basically, obviously, people are tweeting about it, etc. And E! News wrote, Jax Taylor's divorce papers are raising some questions about the legality of his marriage to Brittany Cartwright. So that was the other thing, because Jax was like trying to imply or to say that they weren't ever even legally married, like that they had the ceremony, but they weren't legally married. So then Brittany responded and was like, we are legally married. I'm guessing paperwork is hard for some people, which Obviously, she's not just referring to the marriage paperwork, but also the custody paperwork. And then Lance Bass, who, if you remember, performed their ceremony, replied to Brittany and said, I can confirm this. Pastor Lance signed the papers. Listen, I don't think anyone was ever believing Jax anyways, but I'm glad they confirmed that, you know, Jax is a liar as usual. Jax is such a liar. 
He's this is why I was like, let's not go too far with like giving him the sympathy card when he went to rehab or mental health facility or we still don't know what it was. He's changed the story twice. So I'm starting to think like, where did you go anywhere or were you just at a hotel? I don't know. Like, I just cannot believe anything this man says. He is a pathological liar. He really is. And I don't know if you can help someone like him. I just, I don't know if therapy can help someone like him. So anyways, basically though, because of this error, okay, Jax has refiled for divorce from Brittany, this time with an attorney. So I guess it was kind of floating around that he was like representing himself with the first one. And that's why he fucked up with the paperwork. But he has refiled with Kevin Federline's attorney. Just Jax just keeps digging his own hole d- deeper. Now he wants to be associated with Britney's ex, who everyone hates. Um, then, okay, so yeah, actually, sorry, there's more to that. So he filed for divorce and responded with his own dis- dissolution of marriage request. This was on Thursday, October 4th. Okay. Um, so now he is, I guess, rethinking the custody thing. Or I shouldn't say rethinking, though, because he wasn't thinking about it in the first place. He just didn't know what he was doing. Now, he's also come out with a statement to say that Tom Sandoval has become his best friend amid Brittany Cartwright divorce. And he says that Sandoval checks in more than anyone. Of course he does, Jax. He has no other friends. He has no one else to check in with. And he's been completely isolated and abandoned. And he knows that Vanderpump Rules is maybe, you know, doesn't have a lot more years left in it, maybe a couple, two or three at the most. So what better way to secure himself another job than by becoming Jax Taylor, the star of the Valley's best friend? He's doing a Sheena Lala. Okay. Anything Tom Sandoval does is for himself. Anything Jax Taylor does is for himself. These two can say they're friends, but they're not. They will turn on each other in a dime. Give it a year, two years, whatever. Some new issue will come up when all this other stuff has faded away. And either of them will throw the other one under the bus in two seconds. Okay. You heard it here. I'm not going to say first because everybody's always said this, but seriously, that is that can happen any day now. And again, of course, he's going to be checking in on you and being your best friend. He has no life. He has no job. He has nothing going on. He's got no friends besides Schwartz, who probably, you know, I don't know, lives in his on his own planet, basically. So yeah, he's got lots of time to check in on you, Jax. It doesn't mean anything. But listen, I like Jax is also not a real friend to Sandoval either. So, you know, there's no honor among thieves. So just let them be friends. <laughs> like They're united by the fact that they hate women. That's it. That's really, and the, the fact that they know the audience hates them. That's really it. Okay, so I'm sure we will get some updates on that coming up soon because there seems to be updates about this divorce at least every couple of weeks or so. Um, let's go to Roni news because Roni is back you know, is back on TV and back in the news as it does. Now, we all saw on the premiere episode, if you watched it, the one of the things that was, you know, noteworthy that people were laughing at was Sai's text to Bryn, where she compares Pavit to Dory, which, you know, I I, listen love Pavit, but it was kind of funny. So Pavit has responded And he made one of his like food videos and in it, he's talking to the camera and he's like, you know, I don't resort to, you know, childish name calling or something along those lines. Meanwhile, Sai has also taken to Instagram and made a video and gives context to the Povet Dorit, not Dorit, sorry, (laughs) Dorit. I mean, Dorit and Dory have some things in common. But anyways, he she gives context to it, basically just like excusing it and, you know, saying she was upset and that kind of thing. So but listen, Pavit has been very like even season one, like he'll clap back and he says, I don't resort to childish name calling like some people, I'm assuming. So I'm assuming he's actually upset about that. I don't know. I wouldn't have been that upset about him about that if I was him because I'd be like, well, it's housewives. 
you know, the girls get all heated about stuff and like, like, not that I'm trying to do that thing, like, oh, women, they get all whatever. But at the same time, I guess he's kind of a newer house husband. I think as the seasons go on, the husbands start to get that, you know, they might catch some strays sometimes. But yeah, either way, you know, team pop it, of course. All right. What else do we have to talk about today? We have, oh, yes. We have an update on the Brandy lawsuit, and the update is that there's no lawsuit anymore. So, <laughs> so Brandy revealed via Twitter, as she does, and social media, that her lawyers have dropped her case against Bravo. She says, I mean, you cannot write this shit. I guess I'm doing that now. After a year of telling me how rich I was about to be and how strong my case against Bravo is, my quote unquote lawyers have decided I now don't have a case and cut ties with me. Hashtag paid off, maybe? Allegedly. So I guess she's saying her lawyers were maybe paid off by Bravo. Listen, you clearly didn't have good lawyers if they were telling you that you were going to be rich from this lawsuit. Like we saw what all your evidence was against Andy. It's a, and it was a all a big fat nothing burger. You had nothing. Like, and clearly, listen, just based on this statement alone, it is clear as day that Brandy was motivated by a desire for money. I don't think she ever was really like offended, you know, by the whole like Kate Chastain, Andy thing. I don't think she ever really was like, felt she was like used in like a deep way by reality TV. Like she clearly was like, I'm fucked because Caroline Manzo has put out these sexual assault allegations against me. Now they're not airing my season um, of Real Housewives Ultimate Girls Trip. And because of these allegations, I can't get paid. So here's a way to get paid. This was a money grab. She never had a case. And it's her fault, but it's her lawyer's fault as well, because they clearly misled her. And I mean, but this is what happens when you get blinded by stuff like that, right? Oh, my God. Anyways, and then she tweeted again and said, I am allowed to fucking ponder and wonder why the fuck after a year my lawyers dumped me. Not alleging anything. Well, you did. Because in the last one, you implied that they were paid off. I'm um, not alleging anything. I gave them multiple chances to get out if they wanted to. So I wonder, were they paid off? Were they blackmailed? Was I used as bait and lied to and dumped? I don't know what she would be bait for, but maybe. And yes, were you lied to? Yes, because they're also just trying to get your money. Like, let's be honest. It's just, it's hard. It's It's sometimes just hard to feel bad for people when it's like, how could you not see that you don't have a case? But then on the other side, I'm like, I guess maybe she was that vulnerable because of the Caroline Manzo thing. I don't know. It's just a whole mess. But I'm glad it's done either way. And maybe maybe her lawyers were paid off by Bravo. I don't fucking know. It's Hollywood. It's law. It's entertainment industry. You know, I'll believe anything at this point. No, I won't. But I just mean that there's a lot of strange shit that goes on. At the end of the day, though, I mean, she doesn't have a case. Let's be real. All right. Last piece of news is that Mom Talk can survive this, and it is coming back with a season two. Okay. Of course it is. No one, like, did anyone think it wouldn't? Seriously? Of course. It was like Hulu's most streamed, unscripted show. It's, you know, it's been of great success in many ways. And these girls have a whole lot of mess and it's going to keep going. And guess who keeps trying to inch themselves closer and closer to mom talk? No one other than Miss Sheena Shea. Sheena has been posting pictures with them. Her and Brock posted pictures with a couple of them with Jesse and her guy. It's just, it's a lot. It's like Sheena is the thirstiest person. And I was thinking to myself, I'm like, what is her end goal? Like, she's not going to move to Utah and like try to be on this show, right? Like that would be crazy. But then I was thinking it's probably for all the other stuff. Because then if she befriends them, and is hanging out with them when they're in LA and etc. And then, or, you know, if she goes there, she hangs out with them, whatever, they will come on her podcast and they will do interviews and she will get inside tea and she can use that to her leverage and her advantage. 
that's, I mean, she, listen, she knows always working. I'll give her that. She is hustling. She knows she's not getting on Dancing with the Stars. <laughs> we know she's not going to be hosting Love Island or or going to Broadway or anything like Ariana. So, you know, she's she's got to use what's at her disposal. And I guess being friends with the Mom Talk girls is is the next best thing. I don't know. It's the best thing for Sheena, I guess. But come on, Sheena, get out of here because... I have enough. I've ha- I have like enough Sheena in my life. I don't need her in this world too. And this is outside of Bravo. Can I get a break? I want a break from Sheena. I don't want more. Okay. All right, everybody. I think that's our last story. Wait, let me double check. Mm-hmm. Yes, it is. It's our last story. Okay. So wishing you all a fantastic week. And you are now in the know for everything Bravo. Bye. Thanks for listening, everyone. Your support really means everything to me. And this show wouldn't be possible without you, the listeners. So please, if you enjoy the podcast, leave a five-star rating and subscribe so you don't miss an episode. For more, you can join my Patreon, patreon.com slash bravo and Botox. And for $5 a month, you'll get four extra podcast episodes a month. You'll also get early releases of Bravo Paper episodes and more. Please also subscribe to my YouTube channel at The Bravo Papers and follow me on Twitter, Instagram, at Bravo and Botox and at The Bravo Papers. If you'd like to buy me a coffee, you can at buymeacoffee.com slash Bravo and Botox. You know, send your love through some much needed caffeine. And any guest that was on today's episode will be in the show notes, all their social media and contact information. So thank you so much, everyone. Keep overanalyzing. Bravo.